I actually got into orthopedic surgery to replace hips and knees. Uh, I love the procedure, I love the implants, I love talking about it. Anyone who comes to my clinic will understand that very quickly. Um, and a mentor of mine once said, you know, a good surgeon is a confident surgeon with experience that can take care of their own complications. And that really made an impact on me. And so going forward in my career of training, I always wanted to make sure that I, I could, whether it was in the OR, whether it was something that happened to a patient that we were observing in clinic, I wanted to be able to take care of my own complications and well. I just, to me it seemed as a necessary component of what I was going to do more so than a a goal or a challenge and so with that that's what I did so during my five years of residency training I learned certain things the, the center was you know had certain approaches certain ways and techniques to do things and then in my first fellowship I, I chose it based on the fact that it did different things and I mean we're talking different both standard of care both good ways but I wanted a lot in my toolbox to be able to offer anything to a patient that I was seeing. And then in my second fellowship, I built on this by the fact that the, uh, it was a very high volume revision center. Uh, so in Canada, because the government kind of funds all the hospitals, this was probably the highest complex city of cases referral center. And so I, I actually got a lot of good experience of doing things that surgeons might do once a year, even once every three years. And I was doing them three, four times a week. So it just allows me to be able to do these procedures well, have confidence doing them efficiently, try and decrease in complications, because I learned from the best. I mean, if I was doing it for a year, four times a week with my um, mentors and attendings, then that means, think about how many they've done in their career, right? So I would, anything that they've seen or a complication or how to optimize it, I was able to, to absorb that and learn. Um, and then my own self, seeing them in clinic and, and what was important to them, have these conversations with patients. Is it pain that's important? Is it function? Do you want to, you know, be able to walk and get your mailbox? Or is it that you want to be able to play with your grandkids and pick them up? I, I mean, these are what become the critical points uh, of understanding patients and what they need. And, and so, yeah, I, I became passionate about it because I wanted to be able to sit there and tell them I can do this for you. And, and if I can't, I know someone who can because I know so many people in the field. And it just, it, it, it's, as I said, it seemed as a requirement to be able to do what I do is that I know how to do the most complex of them. After a hip or knee replacement surgery, basically there's a very small subset of patients, we're talking, you know, three to five percent that are unhappy or have a complication from their surgery. Unhappiness can result from it feeling unstable so they don't trust it, that it can be too tight and they can't do the physical activities that they would like to. I mean, we're talking about normal everyday activities like stair climbing, riding a bike. And then there's other things that happen that are called complications, which are more serious that can happen from a trauma or another medical condition. So things like a breaking a bone around the implant or an infection around the implant. And either way, these are quite difficult cases and quite dis difficult discussions with patients. I'd say that's mainly because when we're talking to patients about a first time hip or knee replacement in a clinic, both us as physicians and the patients are happy that they are going to have a good joint afterwards. What I mean by that is I am in a position where I can reassure them that we have a good treatment option for this. It is a routine elective procedure that really is probably one of the most performed in the country. When a, revision, when a patient needs a revision, we are in a much more difficult scenario. As now, we are saying that they had a very good routine surgery that has gone wrong. They know family members and friends that have had this. They want to know why theirs did. And most of the time, to be honest, there's not a rationale for it. And it doesn't unfortunately change the situation. We have to move forward. And what we're moving forward with is that we have to break the news that their replacement revision joint will be much less of a reliable, predictable procedure and the one that has good outcomes. So now we are saying to them, you have this problem and unfortunately I can't fix it to what you may think 
is going to be your outcome or your expectation. And that becomes really difficult because we then have to very much shape what was different and, and convince them that we'll still do a good job for them, but it's much more involved. It involves them taking part in the decision-making process, in the rehabilitation process, and in really the uh, therapeutic relationship we have much more. Similar to a first-time hip or knee replacement surgery, the only reason to do it is to help them. So it never matters what their x-rays look like. If they're in pain and we can improve it, or they cannot do functional activities and we can improve it, that is the only reason to ever have a joint replacement surgery. Similarly, in a revision situation, the only reason to do it is because they are unhappy or they've had a complication. So unfortunately, this question of why is it important for them only comes up when they're already in a situation that they need it and have no other option. And I guess what's important in that setting is it is necessary or you know required for them to have a, a you know a good quality of life going forward is that it's important to be with people that have experience that understand that can counsel them through it what's my knee going to be like if I go through this what's my hip going to be like if I go through this what if I don't and it's people that are there invested in them that they will have a good outcome that are saying I'm going to be there for you if you have another complication I'm still going to be there for you whatever problems that you're having, you can trust that, you know, I'm not just, I'm thinking about you, I'm thinking about your case, and I'm, I am confident with the experience and expertise I have that I can do it for you. The need of hip and knee replacement revision surgeries is going up. It's, it's all our, our association of orthopedic surgeons talks about. I mean, it's been ongoing in terms of healthcare spending, economic plans, the burden of disease, hospital beds. And I think the reason is because, one, you know, there, there's more patients that are getting these as the aging population goes. But the other side of it, too, is as surgeons, we're, we're more comfortable putting these joints in younger patients because the procedure is so good. We can do it as an outpatient basis. We know that the new implants last for 25 plus years, right? And so with that, there's a huge volume of patients, whether because they got a joint replacement when they were young or they're having a complication that will need a revision surgery. And I think that it's important that patients know that there's a team out there that is comfortable seeing them, that they don't have to feel any type of responsibility or accountability that they have a problem and it was something they did and even if they did that we're there and going to listen and still going to help them and fix them and, and offer them the best standard of care that they're not going to be turned away at the door because they think that it was their fault they did something and now we're not going to treat them or treat them with a, a lower standard than we would someone else so I just think it's important for patients to know that they have, you know, a, a group of people, which is important, not just me, myself, there's a whole team, other surgeons, uh, we have the support of the entire hospital, the infectious disease, if you have an infection, anesthesiology for pain control, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, home care services, which they will need, so we're, I think Banner University Medical Centers, the ability to treat everybody from a multidisciplinary standpoint, and that we're all working together for these patients, supporting them for whatever they need. From the very start of the conversation, if a patient needs a joint replacement revision surgery, is they're not getting good news. So our first goal is to actually set that expectation of the hope and optimism is not the same one that we are giving you from your first replacement surgery. So it's quite logical for them to feel this despair and hopelessness. What's important though is that they feel that someone's listening to them. So what is their problem and, and what are their concerns? Because that's our job is to educate them on, okay, this is why you need a replacement surgery. This is what would happen if you didn't have one. And this is what to expect that you are going to have. And that changes, once they feel heard about their problem, once they feel that someone is there and trust that they're gonna help them, I think that that makes it better. You say, we're gonna be there with you the whole way, which we are, knowing that they're not gonna feel blame is put on them and that they're gonna be 
heard that they're going to be supported and that we're going to continue to be there for them. So if they have this problem again, you know, we have the full repertoire within us in terms of experience, expertise as surgeons that we can deal with anything and, you know, we want to, I guess is one of the other biggest qualities is that we want to be there, we want to give them the surgery, this is what we trained for and it's important to us just as much as it's important to them. It's a difficult journey with these patients and as I said, you, you worry about them. You go home at night and you worry about them and you want to make sure that they're doing well. And so anytime that you see these patients in clinic and they're walking without a cane or a walker, or they're infection free or, you know, you see their family member a lot of times and you're like, oh, thank goodness, like, you know, I used to go for a walk with my spouse at night and I can do that again now. And you see the quality of life changes. I mean, they... A lot of times you see these patients in the hospital, right? And if you're meeting them because of a uh, acute complication, an infection or a breakage around the stem, the first time you meet them, they're in their hospital gown in probably a very difficult, challenging time. They haven't eaten in a few days or have pain medication on board. And I'd say that the first time you see these patients in clinic and you know they're dressed in their own clothes and they're there with their family member and you see them as a, a as the person they are, not just a patient, that's probably the, the most rewarding thing. And it's, it's really a bond that you guys share. It's like a difficult, you know, if you take a, a difficult hike with someone and you get to the top of the mountain and it's high fives and you feel this sense of, okay, we did it. Um, I think that that's probably why I do it because it is, it's, a, it's much more, it's the first time, unlike the initial replacement surgery, it's the first time that, you know, you also as a physician have to rely on them to do their work, right? Take their medications, abide by the precautions they're putting on them. And so, yeah, when, when you see them and they've done theirs and you've done yours and it's turned out great, I think that that's probably the reason that I find it rewarding.